We'll call this meeting in order the Blackhawk County Board of Supervisors, August the 6th, 2019. Roll call, please. Leyland? Schwartz? Yep. Here. Strelka? Here. White? Here. Little? Here. Uh, please join us in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, moving on, we got item one, agenda received as proposed or amended. So moved. Second. Any questions on the agenda? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item two is public comments. Anybody like to speak to the board at this time? It's not a agenda item. Please give your name and address or a group that you're with. Yeah, I'm uh, Keegan Smith from uh, 25 West Commercial Street. Um, I'm with the uh, Waterloo Commission on Human Rights. Uh, we're putting on an event this Thursday to talk about the analysis of impediments to fair housing choice, which was a governmental document put out by the Waterloo Community Development in 2014. Um, this document basically covers the housing market in Waterloo and obviously the entire county, entire Blackhawk County is affected by that. Um, <clears throat> we hope that everybody can make it out. It's at 10 o'clock at the library in meeting room one this Thursday, August 8th. Um, and it's uh, vitally important to some of the goals that the county has laid out, such as building desirable communities. Sorry, a little short on breath this morning. Um, and promoting <laughs> economic vitality. So, uh, thank you for letting me speak today. Let me, let me get any questions for him before he leaves. Oh, appreciate your something. service too, and thank you for showing up today. Okay, yeah, thank you, Ke Keegan. What else are you involved in? Um, well, I do a couple other side projects. You know, I did a I did a side project with public safety, and we did right along with you uh, as part of a school project. So I, I just do a couple other. Um, side things, uh, mostly work under Reverend Abraham Funches, as you know, with uh, the uh, Executive Director of the Human Rights Department. So and you're on the Youth Council as well? Yes, I was. I just graduated from uh, West High School, so I, I'm not technically on there anymore, but I was a member of the Waterloo City Council, a founding member. It's just nice to see our youth getting involved yep. in yep. Yep, sure is. this stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I believe he will be heading to uh, Starkville, Mississippi to continue his education this fall. Yes. Right. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Moving on to item three: years of service to employees with twenty or more years of service. Grant. Okay. We have a stack of them here today. Uh, there are a number from the sheriff's office that are for twenty years of service, and that includes Harold Beck, Richard Hoffman. Todd Newgren and Larry Sapp Jr. And for 25 years of service from the Sheriff's Office, Jason Hines, Nathan Neff, and Jason Taronis. And I don't see anyone from the Sheriff's Office here this morning. Um, we also have from the Treasurer's Office for 20 years of service, Vicki Schmidt. Would you come up, please, Vicki? Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Vicki, you want to say a few words? It's been a great place to work. It's okay. It's an awesome place to work. It doesn't seem like 20 years of all my so fast. Okay, well, we appreciate your service. Thank you. And. Finally, we have Karen Dowell from uh, Mental Health and Disabilities Office, 20 years of service. I don't see her here this morning. That's it. Okay, well, we congratulate all those individuals and we thank them for their service to Blackhawk County. Okay, item four, claims and payments, resolution A. 
They have a total amount of $143,644.25 for this week. Okay. Move to. Second. Any questions or comments? Roll call, please. Schwartz? Yes. Drelka? Yes. White? Yes. Little? Yes. Item five, receiving project updates from department heads and or elected officials. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, board. Bob Lincoln, County Social Services. Thought I'd take the opportunity to give you a little update, a lot of things uh, happening with mental health and disability services. Uh, at our last uh, board meeting, the uh, uh, County Social Services Board uh, decided to move forward with the One, one Employer Initiative. Uh, we're currently uh, structured under uh, an arrangement where all of our staff are employed by uh, our uh, member counties. Uh, by January 1st, we plan to have them all brought under one, uh, one employment. Uh, we hope this will give us an opportunity to be a, a stronger organization, maybe uh, more flexible, uh, and some other opportunities to, to grow and expand our, our services. So we're, we're very excited about uh, that, uh, 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 that going forward and appreciate our, our board's leadership and our, uh, our staff uh, really engaging this, this real significant change. In terms of our services, we've uh, released an RFP for mobile response. Uh, that's a service where when people call in crisis, we'll have somebody face-to-face -face within an hour. Uh, we hope to have that on board and operational by our early spring of, of next year. Uh, but we'll be doing a lot of outreach, uh, a lot of connecting with our, our partners uh, around that. Um, CIT, crisis intervention training. We're uh, moving forward our conversations with the Waterloo Police, Cedar Falls Police, Black Hawk County Sheriff, uh, UNI uh, Security. Uh, what we're trying to do is to get together a, a, a pool of uh, a train the trainers. We want to find some champions, and then instead of just bringing the training uh, in, uh, we'll bring in train the trainer, uh, and then we'll have our core, uh, core group here in the community, and we'll provide technical support to them. But I think that'll be a great timing. We have that scheduled for March of, of next year. Uh, that, that will coincide with the launch of our, our mobile response. And then our last initiative is our access center. Uh, that's moving our crisis center that we set up, gosh, what was that, 2012 now. Uh, we've got subacute level of care, and we've got crisis stabilization uh, out there now. Uh, what the big uh, uh, change with the access center is that that will be a direct admit. Uh, Previously, we've diverted from the ED. We've had people go in, get medical clearance, and then go out to the crisis center. Under an access center model, uh, its primary function will be to serve law enforcement, to divert uh, folks that are in crisis, uh, get them out of the hands of law enforcement, uh, get them to the center to triage them, and get them to uh, where they need to be. Uh, the big driver there is uh, no eject, reject. So uh, uh, if this rolls out the way it's envisioned by the, uh, by the state, uh, there will be at least six access centers throughout the state. So if we're full here, then we'll, we'll divert to uh, another access center. But the point being taking, uh, not taking law enforcement off, uh, off the street or out of their community and getting people where they, where they need, to, need to be. Any questions for me this morning? Thank you, Bob. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. And just lastly, I'd, I'd want to I want to thank you for the opportunity to relocate on the fourth floor. We're we're all in our digs now, and and really appreciate that larger space. We've been able to bring uh, more of our partners in the same location and and closer with public health. So we appreciate you thank you. your support of that. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Board. Kathy Nicholas, County Engineer. I wanted to show you a few slides this morning. Uh, this was a bridge that we uh, recently reconstructed on Cotter, Cotter Road, so it's down in the Laporte City area. We did just reopen this uh, last Thursday. So this was the original uh, bridge, probably constructed in the 19-teens uh, or 1920s. It's approximately 30 foot long. This was the old structure. You can see uh, that over the years, the beams had, there was corrosion on the beams, so we put this helper beam in. I, I don't recall exactly when we did that. You can see that some of the, uh, many of the timber pile were very, they were rotted and couldn't support the loading. That's why we put the, the um, helper beam in. So anyway, that was up for replacement and 
our county bridge crew, we were able to replace it this over the past uh, several weeks. Uh, you can see it's our standard. Um, this is about 35 foot long, composed of the four beams. I know some of you have uh, come out and seen this one. We've been setting the beams. Uh, it has guardrail and no approaches because it is just a gravel road. So uh, this was reopened on Thursday afternoon and all went well. And then- How much uh, traffic does that see? This road carries approximately 60 vehicles per day. How many? 60. 60. That's what the DOT count showed last year. Okay. Uh, just in a few other uh, comments, we are, our contract rock carriers are busy. We expect they will finish with us probably Friday, weather permitting and all, all things going as planned. So we are continuing to place rock on the mile, on the, the gravel road system. And lastly, I wanted to uh, introduce Carter Bream. You wanna stand up? He has been our summer intern over the past oh, 10 weeks, 12 weeks. He came to us in late May. He's a civil engineering student, will be a sophomore at the University of Wisconsin in Platteville, and he plays football for them. And he's been a tremendous help to us, done a lot of administrative work, some scanning for us, and he's just seen a lot of things that we do that I think will help him in his um, college years and then in his professional career. So I just wanted to thank him, and can I answer any questions? What's the uh, weight limit on that bridge now? So it will carry legal loads, so um, 80 tons for okay. grain traffic, grain trucks, for example. It will probably carry even some permitted overweight loads. Okay. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody else? Okay, moving on to item six, minutes approved for July 30th, 2019. So moved. Second. Any questions on the minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Item seven is consent agenda be made with a single resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any questions on the consent? Roll call please. Roca. Yes. White. Yes. Short. Yes. Little. Yes. Moving on to item nine, uh, contracts and agreements, resolution agreement for DOT uh, initiated detour primary highways onto local roads uh, between Blackhawk County, uh, November 4th, 2019 to November the 18th, 2019. Kathy, you want to talk a little bit about this? Yeah, this is uh, just a routine uh, permit. The DOT needs to replace the culvert on their portion of State Highway 281. We're going to use Cedar Wapsie Road east of Dunkerton okay, I'll go back to it. as a detour the code of Iowa requires the Iowa DOT to reimburse cities and counties when they use our roads for a detour they're calculating that we will receive approximately eight hundred dollars for this use of the two weeks and if they don't if winter comes early they're not able to get the work done this November they may they'll probably push it back until April or May of next year okay Motion approved. Second. Any other questions? Roll call, please. White. Yes. Short. Yes. Trelka. Yes. Little. Yes. I'm going to back up here to item number eight reports. Um, a motion at the semi annual settlement of Board of Supervisors at Rita Schmidt Treasurer for the period of 1 January 2019 to June 30th, 2019. So moved. Second. Any questions, comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose. Motion carries. Item B is a motion. Semi annual report of Rita Schmidt Treasurer for the period of January 1st, 2019 through June 30th. Placed on file. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose. Motion carries. And the last one C, a motion of the semi annual investment report of Rita Schmidt Treasurer for the period of 1 January. 2019 through June 30th, 2019, be received and placed on file. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we took care of number nine. We'll move to number 10, other business. This is a motion to quest for purchase capital equipment submitted by Kim Veter, IT director, be approved for um, one lap, to purchase one laptop, 10 desktops for 
$9,665.67 to be used by various departments. So moved. Second. Kim, budgeted item. <coughs> yeah. Anybody else got any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item B is a motion to request for purchase of capital equipment um, submitted by Kim Veter, <laughs> IT director, be approved and direct the chair to sign for the same. To purchase of 16 desktops for $13,900.96 to be used in the treasurer's office. So moved. Second. Rita, the county's going to get reimbursed for that full amount? Yes, for that okay. full amount. It's a DOT provides those, but we have to purchase them, so they're ours. Uh, upon that purchase. Okay. Kim, you got anything? Um, no, but the one good thing about all this is court, um, putting those two um, items together, they gave us a better deal on the desk. Very good. Okay. Anybody else? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item C, a resolution travel request submitted by Deb Bunger. Human Resource Director be approved and direct the chair to sign for $329. This is for uh, Marion Kurtenbach to attend Fall Employment Conference. So moved. Second. Any questions on this one? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item D is a resolution of the position reclassification of county social services aid, administrative aid to general assistant coordinator be recommended by Bob Lincoln, County Social Service Directors. So moved. I believe Bob sent a um, memo to everybody on that. Does anybody have any questions for Bob? Yeah. Bob, anything you want to add to it then? Okay, roll call, please. I'm sorry, who's second? A second. <coughs> Schwartz? Yes. Chalka? Yes. White? Yes. Little? Yes. And item E is a resolution extend an offer of employment to a candidate for finance director at a salary not to exceed midpoint or per policy. So moved. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Chalka? Yes. White? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Little? Yes. And moving on to item F. This is discussion uh, potential costs to remodel the former daycare center at Pinecrest. Kind of a brief overview from uh, Rory and the VA director on the stuff that's going on out there. <clears throat> Is work underway right now while you're setting that up? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yolando, the executive director of Blackhawk County, as Roy is setting this up. So uh, we had a very successful weekend down at Irish Fest. The military organizations were there. Um, and as a result of that, um, what ended up happening was they had a function out there where they had a rock, a freedom rock. And uh, they painted it uh, with an eagle and a flag, and they're going to put a three-low clover on there. And they allowed some children to put their handprints on it. And they wanted to donate it to the veterans um, as a, a way of showing their appreciation to the veterans. So that Freedom Rock is done and now in place. Um, it was one of those where it was quick motion. Uh, it, was, it was done painting it on Sunday and they wanted to set it down on, on Monday. Mm -hmm. And so we appreciate it. So our very first big thing that's out there in front of the building is, is a nice little Freedom Rock that's gonna uh, provide a presentation of uh, appreciation. Do you uh, take a picture of it? Uh, we do have some pictures. Why don't you send them to the board? I sure will. And, uh, and then the last thing was uh, Kim and her husband, uh, they gave us a picture of the Sullivan brothers. So that's going to be our very first poster that's going to go in the entranceway. We're going to frame that up real nice. And uh, Kelly Sullivan's got a tour of it yesterday, and so she's impressed about what our future is. So I just look forward to Great. putting it in motion. You can stay up here in case anybody's got any questions. Go ahead, Rory. All right, board. Uh, Rory Giving, maintenance superintendent. Um, just want to go through, I put a, a real brief uh, slideshow together. Um, as I go through, I'll, I'll talk about uh, some of the uh, updates that uh, 
uh, we're looking at uh, doing for this particular area. Um, for starters, uh, it is about uh, approximately 3,500 square feet. Um, it's consisted of uh, three large uh, areas. Uh, and talking with uh, Yolando, those would be areas set up for uh, different uh, activities in the community center. Um, it really is a uh, 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 an ideal uh, space for, for what we're looking at uh, trying to accomplish here. Um, but I just wanted to kind of go through again some of the uh, updates that we're looking at doing. So as you look at this picture, obviously uh, painting uh, from floor to ceiling uh, throughout the whole building. Um, in this area right here, uh, Yolando is planning on putting in uh, a receptionist area uh, utilizing uh, some of their existing furniture that they currently have in their uh, existing location. Um, this here, I just wanted to point out again, painting uh, some of the uh, floor will need to be replaced. Not all of the floor will be, but we went through and we marked all the areas that were bad. Uh, it's VCT tiles, so we're, we're able to get in and, and uh, it's a very common color. Uh, that we can still get and so we will patch the areas that that need to be patched and then we'll have our crews our janitorial crew come in and do a full stripping and waxing <clears throat> uh, there's uh, currently two areas uh, that have carpet uh, what we're proposing is recarpeting both of those areas along with a, another area that was a former classroom uh, giving three office spaces um, along with the uh, entryway uh, from the building side of Pinecrest coming into this area would also have new carpet. Uh, we would leave the uh, door frames, uh, looking at the door frames, uh, they're, they're in very good shape. Uh, color may not be very appealing, but uh, uh, as far as condition, they're, they're in very good condition. Uh, the kitchen, we did include uh, updating or replacing the uh, kitchen cabinets along with the floor in this area. Uh, this is a little better shot here. Um, they've, uh, you know, they've uh, had some uh, abuse over the, over the years. So uh, we would be looking at uh, reducing the number of cabinets that would be in this kitchen uh, to help cost and to actually make some uh, additional space towards the backside of this kitchen for a a table and a, a small break area sure. uh, for the staff. Just another shot of one of the uh, larger classrooms. Um, these, uh, these units here we call Univents. We have 16 of those. Uh, in this remodel, we would be uh, re repainting all 16 of those units. Um, that's actually a pretty uh, involved task because these units do not break apart. They don't break down, so you have to literally sand them in place and repaint them so they are all metal. Uh, so that is very time consuming. Um, one thing I did not point out on the other slide, uh, many of the uh, uh, where the walls meet, uh, the corners are damaged, so this would also include repairing any, any damaged sheetrock and, and patching. Um, it would also include removing any shelving uh, that's ex that's there with the exception of the uh, cabinets, which we decided we'd leave those in place. Uh, but any of the random shelving throughout the building would be taken down and filled in. Um, we currently have four single occupancy uh, restrooms. Uh, obviously, you can tell three of them are designed for little people. Uh, the, uh, the fourth one is... Uh, just very dated and needs new new uh, fixtures. So we did include in this project uh, updating all four of those restrooms. Again, just another shot, not a real good one, uh, but another shot of the uh, one of the larger rooms in the Univents. Uh, this is that uh, area I indicated earlier, um, which you uh, can gain access to this area from within the building. Uh, this would also have new carpet as well. Uh, outside, we have some, uh, I think, seven concrete squares that uh, we included in this uh, that are either cracked or heaving. Um, so that is it for the uh, daycare center. Uh, what I have, and I worked with the local contractor that we've used several times in the past, 
we have an estimated amount of about eighty thousand dollars to do all of these repairs i would like to mention that prior to this we had uh, two hundred and ten thousand dollars earmarked for the uh, va department in their existing area uh, to uh, update that so uh, considerably less uh, still a lot of money but uh, we feel that we're comfortable that that would uh, allow us to get in there and, and get done what we need to have. what's your uh, timetable that is uh yolando and i were talking you know we have to be somewhat careful with that if we put too aggressive of a timeline on there uh my concern is is that uh, those uh, bids will come back a little higher um, so i'm going to be talking with the uh, contractors that we deal with a lot to see what their schedules look like ideally i'd like to shoot for the beginning of the year um, really so that's that's pretty aggressive but that would be my uh that would be my goal. This is only August, and you're not going to start to the first of the year. No, this would be a completion. Oh, yeah. Hmm. That's the new lighting outside, right? Yeah. So I, I just threw these in. It doesn't really have anything to do with this, but uh, nice. I was over there the other night. This is the new LED uh, lighting that we put on the outdoors of the uh, Pinecrest. Uh, very impressive. You can see um, all of the parking lot is illuminated. Um, in the past, that wasn't the case. Uh, there's the uh, lower parking lot down below, very well lit. Um, what's really impressive is the uh, wall pack lights on the building itself. Yeah, so, it looks good. Yeah, it turned out very nice and uh, um, a uh, very large uh, reduction in, in wattage too. I think I went through that when we did this project, but uh, pretty impressive. Um, Yolanda, I'm assuming you're going to accept donations for furnishings maybe within the building or so yeah so my first proposal i kind of put out that, that we will be doing that um, unfortunately we don't have the space already i've had a donate where someone wanted to donate a piano um, mm. we've already got a pool table donated a, a, a an elliptical bike uh donated uh so we're kind of telling um our uh, constituents please uh give us some time because it looks like ribbon cutting won't happen until about january um, there is some space in the garage, but um, we haven't got access to that yet. But um, as we go forward, I think we're going to have a pretty good turnout for donations. Cause we're great, great, great. Things. I think it's going to turn out to be one heck of a facility, something that all will be proud of, the veterans and everything, and also yourself. So I want to thank you for what you're doing. Um, I think you're doing a great job and continue, and we'll have a nice facility there one of these days. Well, I appreciate that vote of confidence in that standpoint, but I also want to take my hat off to you, you gentlemen and Linda for allowing us to have that uh, space. And now we can dream big and uh, and do some things that uh, I feel that we can improve the life of veterans and their spouses and families. So uh, you guys have given us that opportunity, so I appreciate that. Now so the rock looks nice out front, too. So you already see yeah. that. <laughs> I, I think you're... You're not only going to improve lives, but as you know, this work is going to help save lives of yeah, yeah. in this community, and that's that's critically important. I, I my only question, since this is estimated to come in at less than fifty percent of what was budgeted, is there something that we're also we could be doing that we're missing that we're passing up on? Is there more stuff that we could be doing in the outdoor area so uh, to improve that? Some work with Roy uh, signs and etcetera's who I've mm -hmm. been kind of working. Kind of want to kind of mirror the entrance of the current pine crest with a um, uh, something of a awning uh, that same color, same material, just shorter over our door that may have Blackhawk County Veterans Affairs on it and a sign out front so that people now know veterans now know exactly where we're located. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that would help mm -hmm. the awareness of where we, our new day is and uh, it helped us get to where. Roy, when are you going to, have you gone, you haven't gone out for uh, no, our, yet. That's what I was going to mention. My, uh, my next uh, step in this process is to uh, develop the RFP and to uh, get that sent out for bid. So as I do that, I will keep the board informed. When do you think that will happen? My goal would be to try to have that out within the next week. And then you're going to be out how long with them? Uh, for something like this, uh, being that we're under the uh, threshold of a public hearing, um, it would probably be realistic to give the contractors at least two weeks to, to thoroughly review the area to come back with some good numbers. You know, it looks like the majority of the work is painting and flooring. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I, it just looks like to me that we can get in there yet this year. 
like I said, that's my goal, and that's kind of my that was my mindset as well. We're not looking at a substantial, uh, you know, demo. Uh, we're not looking at uh, major construction here. Uh, this may end up being a really nice fill-in job for somebody, uh, while they have other larger jobs going on. So we may luck out. Uh, but again, I want to get a better feel from uh, at the pre-bid meeting when we, we will have a pre-bid meeting. So I'll talk to all the contractors and get a feel for uh, what their schedules look like. And uh, if we could try to get this pushed through before the end of the year, we sure will. Hopefully they won't look at it as a fill-in job. We bid it, we want it done. Pete, you don't see a need for a public hearing on this? Well, uh, no, I don't see, I do not see a need for that. I think. Uh, Obviously, you're going to have a discussion of your bids and your bid selection, but sure. I don't see the need to have a public hearing on this. The, the, the threshold for a public hearing is at 100000 Okay, well, keep us up to date and keep her moving along. And if you got any, um, if you need anything from the board, let us know. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Board, do you have anything else for either one of them? Hey, Roy, one thing on outside there, Rory. Did they put a new light on the flag out there? Did they pull on those high depths? Uh, I believe we did that. I don't believe we did it during this uh, okay. process, but I believe that light is fairly new. All right. Um, when I was over there the other night, it was lit up very nicely. Okay. Pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing it finished. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, moving on then to item 11. Any reports or information from the board? Sam? I just want to put a plug in for uh, the new license plate the state is offering. It has a black background with white letters. Uh, I purchased one. The money goes toward our road use fund to maintain our roads and bridges. And it looks like it's going to be a very popular plate. So I encourage people to consider it. They, they, I think the state's surprised how popular it's been uh, because we just alone in the last couple of weeks, two, three hundred plates came in in a couple of days. So uh, they're going to have it where they'll give us an inventory, so we'll have it in, so you don't have to order it like you did. I had to wait. But you couldn't. You couldn't wait. You had to have it. So <laughs> they look if, nice, though. So if your plates aren't due, you can still swap out. Yep. yep. Mine wasn't due until November. Thirty-five dollars. Personalized one is sixty dollars. All the funds go toward the road use fund. And they're uh, manufactured by prison industries. Yeah. Um, is there's a picture of that on the state site. Yeah, and we have a, a plate sample in the office too. On yeah, the I'd like to see what that looks like. Rita, is there room on there for that sticker still, or is them for the decal? Yeah. No, oh. uh, I did uh, bring that up uh, with the association to see. And uh, like I said, the, they weren't expecting it to be as popular as mm -hmm. it is. Uh, people, especially with black vehicles, like the black and white because it looks retro and that. But uh, I have uh, uh, put in saying if they would have the decal area that you could order those. But that will be down the pike. Oh. And if it comes in, Craig, I'll tell you. All right. Thank okay. you. Just one other thing. To, <laughs> as we're going about our days and the ne next few days to remember the people that were killed over the past weekend in these shootings, it's... Somewhere down the road, this stuff has got to stop, especially when you hear the news that more people were killed in the United States than were killed in Afghanistan in the last two years. That's kind of sad. Chris, anything? Oh, I just uh, echo Craig's remarks. Okay, with that then, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, we are adjourned. Thank you.